Well, as you were hearing there, the RSF, the paramilitary group, have taken Sudan's second largest city, Wad Medani. Let's bring in William Carter. He's the Sudan country director for the Norwegian Refugee Council. He joins us now from the Kenyan capital, Nairobi. William, you have teams on the ground. What are you hearing from them about the situation in Wad, Wad Medani at the moment? I mean, it's a very distressing situation, just sheer desperation, people running and walking for days just to leave the area and uh, arriving with uh, absolutely nothing. So our teams are out. We're, we're talking to people. We're trying to distribute as much assistance as we've got left. But it's a really tense and anxious moment. Um, William, you talk about your teams speaking to people who fled. I understand you've been doing some needs assessments in neighboring states for, for the people who have left, and another massive displacement in this conflict. Can you talk us through how that's unfolding in terms of, of the humanitarian situation? Are there, for instance, sufficient supplies available to support them? Well, this is a really underfunded humanitarian response. This year, we probably had only a third of the funds that we needed to deliver life-saving assistance to perhaps 25 million people in the country. So at the end of the year, we've got very little left. Um, but uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people have left this city in the last few days. It's a huge number at a time where, where there's not much available to them. Our, our teams have come out, but they were completely overwhelmed. Uh, I, I guess, you know, people are living in the open, having, you know, don't know where the next meal is coming from and still completely uh, terrified that the fighting will follow them as it followed them mm -hmm. from Khartoum. So it's a, it's a hugely chaotic situation. In terms of the fighting being ongoing, I have to ask you, given what we've been hearing in terms of regional diplomacy, this RSF offensive seems to have taken a lot of people by surprise. There are now calls for Army Chief Burhan to step down. Where does all of this now leave any, any kind of process to try to resolve the conflict? All I've been hearing broadly is pessimism about where this goes from here. It does look like there's some dark days ahead. I mean, we, we hope that one of these diplomatic initiatives uh, works, but at the moment we're preparing for even worse calamities. It looks like we're headed towards almost complete state collapse at the moment. The capture of this city knocks out one of the major operational hubs for aid organizations and uh, really pushes uh, the government-held areas to the very extremities of the country. It's forced a lot of agencies to evacuate. Um, so it looks pretty bleak right now. We've got to redouble efforts to get humanitarian aid in. We've got to figure out a much more assertive way to, to bring stability and peace, because there's real risks that this will destabilize not just the rest of Sudan, this huge country, but all the other fragile countries that we're having to work through to, to help people in Sudan. Of course. William, you talk there about state collapse. There have been concerns for some time now that this conflict could result in, in the broad-scale fracturing of Sudan as a country. Do you share those concerns? That would obviously have enormous humanitarian consequences. We do. It's a very real scenario and one that it's uh, leading closer into every day. Um, certainly, we haven't seen a ceasefire deal um, hold, at least not on the ground. And uh, the state becomes, unfortunately, weaker and weaker. Millions of people become more and more vulnerable. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, we can keep providing some humanitarian assistance, but that doesn't save the fate of a country and the fate of, you know, almost 50 million people. William Carter there, the Sudan country director for the Norwegian Refugee Council. Thank you very much for joining us, William, and we wish you and, and your agency all the best with your work. Thank you.